Hello, Randall Monk and Ron of Zane here with another gem of wisdom from Archangel Michael. And we're going to talk about programmed memory seed atoms, soul merges. Consciousness time cells is another name for a special kind of memory seed atom. There are memory seed atoms within our DNA divine blueprint which were programmed to activate at certain stages of our life. There are also event-activated memory seed atoms, which occur when an individual triggers either higher frequency MSAs, memory seed atoms, or lower frequency MSAs containing our gifts, talents, and attributes, or our karmic, karmic tests and challenges within our current divine blueprint. During our drama of life, these memory seed atoms are activated by our thoughts, intention, and interactions with others. When we first began to incarnate in the physical body, we were, we went, and we've talked about this before, we went before Council and our, our, uh, the, the beings of light, and it was decided what our experience, was, experience for that lifetime was to be. And we had an over soul. We had a soul fragment from our divine I am presence, our white fire memory seed atom, our God self, what one of the whatever you want to call it. And it was just a small fragment. And this we're talking about this subdimension, this sub this sub universe, and th this experiment in duality. That's all we talk about. That's all we could handle right now. And Michael said, the rest of the universe will wait, and because we have all we can do with understanding this specific sub-universal experience in duality and polarity, which is very, very important. Uh, one of the most important, it is the most important uh, facet or sub-dimension within this universal experience. And so we were given a, a um, divine blueprint, a mission, a job, an opportunity, and we were given the talents, uh, talents and attributes, qualities and virtues in memory seed atoms that would support that and help us. But then we were also given challenges too, along with that to help us expand and grow. Because, you know, if we, like Michael said, what do you think you do? Walk down golden streets, flapping your wings? If everything is perfect, you don't, you can't, what do you do? You don't grow, you don't learn, it becomes very boring. And so that's what duality and polarity is about, helping us to experience, you, we would not appreciate the light without the dark. We would not appreciate all the gifts without the challenges and the things that we overcome and we experience that helps us to grow and expand and become wise. And so, as you came into that lifetime, all was expected of you was to do your best with what you had within that divine blueprint that, mem that, that uh, contained all the opportunities, everything that you were expected to experience, or both negatively and positively, that was what you, that was what you had. Well, when we sank down to the density, we be, we lost. Everything changed. Everything changed. And so, instead of being able. They had, they had to give us the specifics of what we were to learn, but they also had to give us an opportunity to grow. But they could see that it had to be ongoing. And so instead of getting all of the information and everything that you were gifted with for that particular light, and after we sank, we were, we were attuned to, in the solar system, there were 12 planets, and we were attuned to the harmonics of 12. When we sank into the density, there were only seven planets, and therefore, in our solar system, and so therefore, we, we attuned with our chakra system to the harmonics of seven. And that's when this all changed. And so, as the fetus came into the mother's womb, first of all, in the preparation, when the mother got pregnant, that, uh, that stream of light from the sacred triad, from the causal body, came down. And then she, then she was impregnated, but it was with the, the life stream of that child. And as the fetus began to grow, one-seventh, one-seventh 
of memory seed Adam. There were seven there, seven fragments of your soul self for that lifetime. So that first fragment went into the fetus and anchored within the God, with a sacred heart, within the Dodd Core God soul. And so as time proceeded, the next, the next download, the next soul merge came at about at the age of seven. And so, as you can see, how much, how the changes that come out of the baby stage and they become, you know, they begin to become independent. They begin to become not so dependent on the parents. They begin to have thoughts of their own. And then the next memory seed atom comes down between 12 and 14 in puberty. And you can see the radical changes there. It's a very important one. And they sometimes they become again more, more rebellious or or seeking or to become a person to come become an individual instead of a stamped blueprint of the mother and father and so that proceeds then the next one comes in, in the 20s in the, in early there's you know there's some leeway there from 20 21 22 in there and the next one in the mid 30s and then you know we have what they call the midlife crisis sometime in the 40s and then the sixth one in the 50s, the, the seventh one of told that usually comes is, is to download in, in some time in the 60s. And that's the seventh one and the final one. However, you see, it's so important how children are taught, trained and taught. You can see the difference in, in caring, loving, and balanced and harmonized families and those that are dysfunctional that are that are seeking outside themselves that are stuck in the mass consciousness belief structure so you see those first three are going to come up automatically but by that time that time and especially in the midlife crisis the 40s if the person has not opened their heart chakra if they have not it's a, before that, those three lower chakras and the solar, the solar plexus was your center of power. By that time, we should have learned enough to balance and harmonize to a, a, to a specific level or to a degree where we are learning to do no harm and we are beginning to send out more positive energy than negative. We're beginning to self, we should begin to become a self-master and, and, and began to control our, our ego desire body and our animal human instincts and become more compassionate and more caring. If that doesn't happen, and you've read this, if you haven't cleared 51% of your karma, if you haven't learned to radiate some love a certain amount, and if you haven't opened the heart chakra, that for each fourth level is a bridge in each, each subdimension. And and all the dimensions. And the null zone of that, of that fourth dimension is very important too. And so if you have not done that, if you have not begun to grow and evolve at least into a human human nature and begin to tap in a little bit to your spiritual human nature instead of just a human animal instinctual nature, you said, guess what happens? You don't get the benefit of your divine blueprint. You do not start to get those adamantine particles that there. That energy turns. It does not go. It does not go, it does not go forward. But if then you keep going on and on, and you do not, and a lot of people never get past the third or the fourth, that level. They never take it to tap into those wonderful gifts that are stored within in the uh, Kundalini with the, the memory seed atoms with another word chakra. And so those first three uh, soul merges, those are going to be active. Those are going to be active. And a lot of people never get past that. But then when it comes to the four, that, that next one, at the heart center, if, if you haven't, as I said, begin to lift your, to lift your consciousness, to come into balance and harmony, and to uh, at least begin to control, what you might say, your instinctual nature, and begin to work on your self-mastery. That energy is going to turn and go back down. And it's going to magnify those three lower 
those three lower chakras of survival, ego, desire, body, power struggles. You can see what happens, like to teenagers, especially when they get in their 20s and so on, how they become so erratic and, and, and things, be, you know, things begin to go bad and you wonder what's happening. And unfortunately, in a lot of humanity, they never got past those three soul merges. They never got the benefit of those next level of awareness, their next sacred, sacred blueprint, their divine blueprint. And so as they go forward into those each soul bird, it just magnifies as that energy comes up and hits the heart chakra and turns around and goes back down. That's why you can see so many people, older people, they get so angry and so frustrated. They give up and they feel like they have nothing to live for. Well, they really don't. Because they not only are not getting that life-giving energy, the adamantine particles, they're not, they're not activating their sacred mind. They're not tapping into all of those abilities and everything that they have. And so Michael called it the golden promise that we have the opportunity, those downloads, the loading our soul, the soul merges, those seven facets, which, which take us to the next level. We become more responsible, we become more creative, we become more intuitive. But is that you don't stop there. You don't stop with just that soul divine blueprint for this lifetime. We can go as far as we can go. We can tap, we tap into, okay, we have downloaded all of our soul fragments and we're in those higher fourth dimensional levels and we're gaining the information from our other soul fragments. We're sharing, we're expanding. And then what, guess what? Then we tap into our sacred triad. In the causal body, that oversoul there that is there is absorbed it is absorbed into the sacred triad, and so we're directly connected. And then that's where we begin to get the information. So you can see, we can reach our destination for this subdimensional experience. And so go back through your lifetime. It, just go back through those ages, and you can highlight. It's, it's a lot of time, a lot of drama, a lot of tragedies, some gifts and blessings, a lot of tests. But you can more or less, you should be able to more or less identify those times that you had a soul merge, which was either a positive one or a negative one. Those are the understandings and the gifts that we're being given now. And I'll be publishing this, I will be publishing, publishing this article in full in the next little ebook that I'm writing. Because all this information is important and it understands us more about humanity and it understands that we can have more compassion for the people around us, that the things they do, we don't know what they've done, what the uh, past life experiences they brought forward. We don't know what, how, what they've suffered. And so we don't have to like them, but we can send love to their soul. And as a self master, we are not to judge. We are to rise above the conflict. You're not. It's really difficult not to see all of this negativity as negativity and Armageddon and, and we're doomed and we're being punished. Can you see it's all divine order? We have created our reality and now we must experience it. So where are you are? Where, how much advantage have you taken of those gifts of the spirit? They're there waiting for you. You can still tap into them, they're still there, they're not going away if you haven't opened them up. What a blessing. Know that, like I said, it's an inside job. Know that what it's coming to, it's all here, it's up to you. That's scary. But believe me, when you take control, self-awareness, self-mastery, self-control, I see one of the main things with people like me and Randy, who are teachers and who are sharing their journeys and who have overcome monumental uh, tests, challenges, and tragedies, we have tenacity. We kept on keeping on no matter how bad it got. I can't tell you how many times I've been knocked to my knees and I had to get up again and start over. 
but it's all part of my soul journey. It was all, it was designed and planned just for me. And I look back in retrospect and I see the justice in it all. For it has made me the person that I am today. I still have a way to go, but it's easier and I understand it. And I'm okay with it. And that's what we want to offer to you. You know, what Rana said, it all starts here. I want to just add that this is another reason why it's so important to be heart-centered and have an open heart. Because that allows that energy to move up into the higher chakras when it moves up and not turn around and go back down to the lower chakras. Anyway, that's all I have to add. <laughs> so anyway, a lot to think about. But hopefully you'll take it to heart and it'll help you to understand what you're going through. And it'll help to give you courage and inspiration and tenacity. We love you. And we know, we know that you're doing the best you can and know that you're not alone. All of us are in this together and we're going to make it. Bye-bye. Much love and many blessings from our hearts to yours. Bye for now.